Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our attendance boundary process discussion on Bartlett Elementary. My name is Chris McCord. I'm Assistant Superintendent of Operations for Conroe ISD. I'm delighted to be with you this evening, whether you're here live watching our presentation or you're watching it on recorded webinar. I have a few people I would like to introduce that are really integral to the process of zoning for Bartlett Elementary. They do a great job and their efforts are appreciated. First off, I'll start with Dr. Bethany Medford. She is here, she'll give you a little wave. Dr. Medford is here. Anything to say, Dr. Medford, as we begin this process? No, we appreciate you guys listening in. Next up is Dr. Shelley Winkler. She's our Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education. Uh, Dr. Winkler? No, hey guys, thank you for um, coming and for all of our committee members that are watching, uh, thank you for your time. And if you know a committee member, thank them for their time as well because they're working really hard to make sure we make a great decision for our kids. That is well said. Thank you, Dr. Winkler. Next up is our Director of Community Outreach, Mr. Rod Chavez. Rod, could you give everyone a wave or say something profound, sir? Well, I can wave and the profound thing is uh, welcome and thank you for participating. Hope um, hope uh, to you be a part of whatever it is that we need to do to make our community the best community there is. So special thanks to Rod and his team. Tonight's webinar will be posted on our Boundary website. It'll be posted this webinar as you actually see it right here. And then in the coming days, Rod and his team will work to convert it to Spanish. We'll post it on the website where if you'd like to watch this in Spanish, you'll be able to do that also. So I appreciate all our people gathering. And with that, uh, we are going to begin our presentation tonight. We anticipated it lasting somewhere around 25 minutes or so. So I'm going to work and here we go. Uh, Dr. Winkler, do you see my screen? Does it look good? Uh, I've never had a doubt, thank you. So we are here tonight to discuss the zoning process for Bartlett Elementary. And Bartlett Elementary is the last school that has been built as part of the 2019 bond referendum. It's coming soon, it'll be in 950 seats. It'll be a two-story elementary school. We anticipate it uh, serving grades pre-K through four. It'll be located on Cielo Drive in Conroe, which is up by Pine Acre Trails. And on that note, I will show you some pictures shortly. But before I do that, I want to thank the 44 person committee members of team we have that are serving over the last month and will be working for the next four or five months to put together the best boundary recommendation that we can put together that will go before the Board of Trustees, where the Board of Trustees will ultimately approve uh, the boundary for Bartlett Elementary for the starting in the year 2024-2025. So I appreciate all 44 members. We're meeting each Thursday and they've been doing a great job. So what are we trying to accomplish with the zoning of Bartlett Elementary? Well, really a lot of things, but two things stand out. Number one, just like all 65 schools had to have a boundary created for their uh, where they serve, so does Bartlett Elementary. So we're trying to develop an attendance boundary to populate Bartlett Elementary while preserving some room for growth of the facility. And it's uh, it's in the north, in the north part of our district where we are experiencing fast growth. So that's a challenge. So we're trying to also provide overcrowding relief to a number of schools, elementary schools in the Caney Creek and the Conroe feeder, camp, uh, feeder, feeder zones. And they've been involved and we'll be talking about each of those uh, schools and some of the particulars as far as their numbers of capacity in the following slides. Everyone wants to know what's it going to look like. Well, it will look similar to this. If you've been in Hope Elementary in the Caney Creek feeder zone or Annette Gordon Reed Elementary in the Conroe zone, you've got a good feel of what the building will be like. The front entryway will be a little different. This is what it's looking like via computer rendering. And this is what it was looking like in August of 2023 if you looked at it from the south. So for a point of location to give you an idea of where you're looking, this is Bartlett Elementary. You'll see the two stories. You'll see the, a lot of queuing space for cars, which is really important in 2023. Behind me, if I was this drone, would be Pine Acre Trails. And a little further behind me and to the left, also known as the Southwest, would be the airport. So that gives you an idea of where Bartlett Elementary is. So this particular process, why is it challenging? Well. Here's the thing is that we have a lot of schools and we're going to show you some data in the next few slides that have a lot of capacity issues in both the Caney Creek and Conroe zones. So we're efforting to solve a lot of problems and we're not gonna be able to solve all the issues. We have 950 seats. 
It's going to be a gorgeous new school. We're excited about it for the kids and the staff, but it's just one school. And it's the last elementary school that's going to be developed in the Northern Caney Creek and Conroe feeders in the near future. So we always take a, a lot of effort to make sure we do the best boundary recommendation we can because there are so many needs in this area. And because it's only one school, we're really uh, doing what we can to hone in with the best possible scenario to present to the Board of Trustees. So there's a lot of goals we have when we do this. I would tell you all these things are considered and taken seriously. The main thing we have to do is to reduce the enrollment at overcrowded campuses. But we also, all the numbers we're going to talk about tonight, those are real kids and they're real families and we understand that. And we effort to not move anyone if we don't have to. But we also effort to do what we can to reduce capacity where schools are overcrowded and thus classes and hallways and bathrooms and car lines and everything that goes along with the campus. So it's these are goals that we take very seriously. As far as the considerations, these are things we talk about a lot on Thursdays when we meet. I will just hone in on one for tonight due to brevity, and that is geographical proximity. We like for kids within reason to be able to go as close as they can to an elementary school from where they live, eat, sleep, and play. And lots of times it's easy to do that. Sometimes I may be closer as the crow flies to one campus, but as I drive by car or bus or even bicycle, it might be another campus. So all these tiles are things that we take seriously and we talk about each week when we meet. And I just wanted to uh, emphasize the proximity. Also, uh, the attendance boundary process webpage is up. You can view all of our scenarios that we vetted so far, we've vetted 13 different scenarios. Uh, we have four that are alive and one more that's coming, but you can give comments. The comments go to the Boundary Committee. They also go to the school, school Board of Trustees. And there are a lot of frequently asked questions, basically many, many years of frequently asked questions covering almost any questions that you might have regarding the attendance boundary process and how it happens. So getting down to nitty gritty, just talking here about uh, where, how we, why we need this school. How did we get here? Well, this is the Caney Creek Elementary Feeder. This is a couple of weeks ago on September 7th. And you can see that in the Caney Creek Feeder that we have Austin Elementary. And a concern there is we're 1,016 students. And in less than five years, we're headed to 1,570 students while already way over capacity with seven portable classrooms. Creighton Elementary correspondingly, uh, you can see that we are at 16 portable classrooms, over 150% of capacity. Hope has a little bit of room. Milam and San Jacinto do now, but I would draw your attention to the last column on the right. With Milam and Spring Branch Crossing coming online, you can see in less than five years that Milam is going to approach doubling in size. San Jacinto Elementary is going to increase by around almost 900 students within the next five years when it has a capacity of 725. And that will be from a lot of reasons, but mainly Evergreen, Artavia, and Mavera. So uh, all those things are being considered while we uh, effort to populate the attendance boundary zone for Bartlett Elementary in the North. Correspondingly in the Conroe feeder, over half the elementary campuses are over capacity. Uh, ones that we're primarily looking at would include Anderson, which is over. Giesinger, we're not right now. Giesinger was addressed for a little while when we did the zoning for Annette Gordon Reed Elementary in the western side of the Conroe zone. Also, Patterson is in the epicenter of concern, headed to nearly 1,700 kids in less than five years, while it's already over at 115% of capacity. Reeves, a smaller school, considerably over capacity. Runyon, an even smaller school at 118% of capacity in Wilkinson, which is at the middle of a lot of growth, which will be adding quite a few kids going from 960 kids to just under 1500 kids in the next five years. So that gives you an overview of Caney Creek and Conroe. This gives you an idea of what subdivisions are contributing to it. If you look, SF does not stand for square foot. It stands for single family occupancies, but you can see Silverthorne in the Anderson zone, Pineacre Trails and Signorelli, which is now called CLO in the Patterson zone, Sweetwater Ridge in the Austin zone, and Spring Branch Crossing in the Milam zone. Down along the 242 corridor, of course, uh, you have some massive subdivisions coming in Artavia, 
3,300 homes, Mavera and Evergreen. So these are things we look at each Thursday while we work on zoning. Also, if you keep going and you keep moving forward, this is another way of looking at it. When you have campuses that are already capacity in Anderson, which will be adding over 700 students, Patterson, a little under 1,000, Austin, right at 1,000 more students until 2032, Milam, just under 1,000, Creighton, considerably fewer at 365, Remember, Creighton's already at 152% of capacity. And then San Jacinto stands out. Wilkinson stands out in nearly a, a 756 new students. So these are all things that we're working through. Here is a quick look at the current elementary feeder, <clears throat> as well as uh, what I think is an important picture that shows you the location of Bartlett Elementary on Cielo Drive. So you can see the arrow that takes you to it. Just making sure we all know what we're talking about as far as boundary zones. I'll start with the yellow zone, which is Patterson, and I'm gonna work clockwise. Patterson is in yellow, Austin pink, Creighton green, Milam blue, uh, purple would be Hope at the bottom, and that off-white or yellowish color is San Jack. Green, that light green color is Wilkinson, BB Rice in the brown on the left or west side of the road. Blue on the west side of the road is Reeves. And then if you look there in orange in the southeast corner, it is Runyon. Armstrong in pink in the middle bottom, Sam Houston in green, and Anderson in gray due north just to the east side of 75. So that gives you a quick tour counterclockwise of the current boundary zones. These are all at the uh, zoning website if you want to look at them in more detail. So moving forward, I want to talk about some scenarios. We have 13 scenarios uh, that we're looking at. And we have a number of scenarios that are no longer in consideration after our weeks of analysis. If you would like to look in detail at all of these scenarios, whether they're in play or no longer in consideration, you can do it in a lot more detail by going to our attendance boundary webpage. But here is version 1.0. I'm going to talk mainly about the ones that are still in play. So here's scenario one. This is scenario 1.1 available at the website. Scenario 1.2, and you can see the changes by color. Scenario 1.3. Now, 1.3, as you can see, is in play. If you look at 1.3 in play, what I will do, I'm going to go around and we're going to have fly-in boxes that are going to detail the changes. I will tell you, if you look at my screen, in general, in almost every scenario, we may or may not highlight it, but the area above 3083, above Anderson, a lot of this area will transition depending upon the scenario to Bartlett Elementary. The area above this area, which is Patterson, a lot of this will transfer and transition uh, in a lot of the scenarios to Bartlett Elementary. And then when you get over in here toward the Northeast, a lot of this area is currently Austin and you can compare it to the existing boundary webpage. It will transition to Austin Elementary depending upon the scenario. And then I'm going to highlight things that are a little bit more difficult to see. Starting with right here, uh, scenario 1.3 that we are currently vetting, uh, 35D ENF, Barton, Barton would move uh, from uh, Runyon to Patterson, Barton Creek. If you look over here, Wilkerson to Patterson 35A, Barton Woods, Creighton to Milam, this is Tangle Wild 27B, Austin to Creighton right along uh, the uh, Waukegan, Ro Waukegan Road. And then over here along 105, some smaller areas, but also many, many students there a little bit further to the east along 105, and you can see where they are there. Transitioning also, scenario two, you can view it on your leisure at the website if you choose. It is no longer in consideration. Scenario three is no longer in consideration. 3.1 is no longer in consideration, as is 3.2, as is 3.3, as is 3.3.1. Scenario four, let's talk about scenario four. Scenario four, there's the, the features that you can look up here and I'm gonna draw my cursor. The Anderson transition to Bartlett's a little different. It's a little closer to 75. You can see the area right in here, transitioning from Patterson to Bartlett. And this area here, transitioning from Austin to Bartlett. After that, it's uh, diagrammed here, right here. And in this particular scenario, 12A, F, and 12I would transition from Reeves to Anderson as Reeves is considerably over capacity. 
And Anderson would result at half capacity because they would have sent a few students to Bartlett Elementary. Patterson to Anderson, 17B and 35B. Wilkinson to Rice, 76A. This would be the part of Grand Central Park, theoretically, that is north of Grand Village Boulevard and west of the creek. Runyon to Patterson over here at Barton, at, uh, Barton Creek, 35D and E. Barton Woods, uh, 27A. An area up here along Old 105, 24A. And right here, you can see here along Old 105 and Current 105, as well as the area that I referenced above Patterson that would transition to Bartlett. So that is scenario four. Scenario five is still in play. Also, Anderson to Bartlett, as we talked. Reeves to Anderson, H and I would move from west to east. Reeves to Houston, more toward central town, uh, section 11. 17B and 17C, Patterson to Anderson. This area here in Grand Central Park, right here, uh, Barton Creek, right here, Barton Woods, uh, Barton to Pat Patterson to Bartlett in the north. Creighton to Austin, 25E, Forest Trace, uh, 206 students headed to uh, 261 students in just the next few years. Quite a few students live here in Forest Trace. We're looking closely at Forest Trace. Forest Trace currently goes to Creighton that you see in green. Before Hope Elementary was developed, they went to Austin. So we've been looking closely at where 25E Forest Trace would go and end up at the very top, Austin to Bartlett. Scenario six, our last new one that we have diagram now, we have another iteration that's in the works, but you can see here at the north, Anderson to Bartlett, Reeves to Anderson, 12H and I, 17B and 17C, 11, Reeves to Houston, Martin, uh, Martin Creek, right here in Grand Central Park, Martin Woods, in the north of uh, Patterson, and then these areas around Old Highway 105 and 105 itself, and then at the very north, going from Austin to Bartlett. So these areas are here. I've gone through them quickly. I will tell you and remind you, if you really want to look at them, you can always review this webinar that'll be immortalized for you to look at anytime you like. And you can also go to our Bartlett Attendance Boundary webpage and you can look at it uh, at your leisure all you would like. So just a few things tonight is obviously our first presentation. It is a virtual presentation. I hope you're enjoying it. But also note that uh, coming up next Thursday, we will be at Austin Elementary, uh, boots on the ground and the cafeteria there to give a presentation uh, live and in person uh, very similar, in fact, identical to the one that I'm giving now. And then we'll have two more, one in November 7th and one November 9th. Dr. Winkler, I see you zoomed in. Did you have something to add or just zoom? No, I was just already in case you had a question for me. Oh, I, you're awesome. I, I, you know, just in case I wanted to be here for you. You don't know Dr. Winkler. She's all right. So thank you, Dr. Winkler. So, hey, a few questions while we're here. So how are school sites chosen? We get this one. It's usually one of the first ones we get. So it has to be a two-way street. The land has to be available, uh, especially in East County. Access to utilities is a big deal. Roadway access, drainage, detention are things that you have to look at now. All the easy fruit has been picked for land in uh, Conroe ISD to build schools on. You need around 20 acres to build a, an elementary school. But we look at all these things and uh, we looked at the demographic reports and I showed you some of the slides. Those are all considered as we look at school sites. Also, question we get a lot. Our family specifically purchased our home to attend the schools we're, we are currently attending. Why are you consider rezoning our school? Well, obviously Conroe ISD, we started out with one school, now we have 65. Every time we add a school, it needs to have a boundary created for it. This will be the 66th. In doing so, we want to make boundaries that make sense visually and in the real world. We want to have a boundary, like I said earlier, where people can live close to the place that they go to school, their, their friends and themselves. We also want to make boundaries where if I am a, a parent and, or a student, that I am not driving by one school or two schools or more to get to my school because we didn't change the boundaries. So we don't like to move kids. We always like to say we like to have an object to rest, stay at rest, but we do have to move boundaries from time to time to populate schools and to relieve overcrowding. But it's something we take seriously. So what grade levels are initially anticipated to be impacted by Bartlett? Pre-K through four. We're looking at pre-K through four in the Bartlett Elementary Zone. 
How likely is it that my neighborhood will be rezoned? We don't really know till we get through with the process. So we're going to work through it. We're going to uh, take a lot of effort. We're going to vet it. All 44 people on the committee representing all schools, principals and parents from all schools, and then we'll ultimately, ultimately make a recommendation to the school board. Special programs will be determined at the end. We'll see how we are on space and availability and what the zones look like, and then we'll make good decisions at the end uh, for things like Title I, bilingual, special education, and pre-K classes. We are planning at this time to have pre-K at Bartlett Elementary. Okay, here's a good question. What about current students finishing the last year at their campus in 23-24? In or say in this particular case, it'll be 24-25. So what will happen will be is if your child, for example, is going into fourth grade at Bartlett Elementary, or say your, your child attends Patterson, and say they were rezoned to Bartlett Elementary, if you wanted to stay at Patterson for one more year and you applied for a transfer, provided we have space and you can provide transportation, we would allow that. It's also important to note, for example, if you had a child who was an incoming fourth grader and you applied and you could provide transportation, Let's say you had an incoming second grade sibling also of the fourth grade child. Assuming you could provide transportation for both and we had room, we would allow that, but I'd want to make an emphasis that would be for one year, but you would also need to provide transportation. How often do we rezone? We don't want to rezone any more often than we have to. Uh, the uh, issue we face, especially in the Candy Creek zone, is we look at this, we had to establish due to rapid growth, uh, Hope Elementary. That opened in August of 2021. Some, but not all, of students in the southern portion, southern half of the Candy Creek Elementary Zone were rezoned. So we are working to not have to rezone any, anybody in the south any more than we have to. That is a possibility because we know growth is coming. But in short, we do not want to rezone any more often than we have to. Can the community vote on a scenario? There is no vote on the scenario by the community. However, if you add input through our attendance boundary webpage, that input is shared with the attendance boundary, is shared with the board of trustees, but ultimately the board of trustees will make the final decision. It is anticipated that decision will be made in January of 2024. So that is what we have tonight. This will be uh, available uh, on a uh, webinar. It will be converting it to Spanish. Uh, Dr. Winkler, if you're still there, I do not see any questions at this time. If you have questions after you viewed this webinar, hey, remember, it is on almost every question ever asked, and that's a lot, is available on the Attendance Boundary webpage as part of Bartlett Elementary. Dr. Winkler, I'll let you close this out. Do you have anything profound to say before we end this? I don't think it's anything profound, but um, we love uh, all of our kids and we want the best for them. And we know this is a hard process. So uh, we really want to hear your feedback and um, we appreciate any participation um, that you could provide to help us make the best uh, decision. So we're going to make the best decision we possibly can. And then we're going to work to provide a quality and fun education wherever your child may go. So, hey, thank you for joining us tonight. If you're able to join us or if you're looking on later at webinar, Thank you. We appreciate you. Have a great evening. Thank you.